Welcome back to the run up on Plus TV Africa. Well, following fears of violence and allegations of plots to rig the polls, the police have declared their readiness to ensure heat free and credible exercises. And they have also deployed their men to all parts of the country. And this came as top politicians in Lagos urged the Independent National Electoral Commission to transmit results of tomorrow's elections electronically to its results viewing portal in real time from the polling units, unlike what happened during the February 25th polls. And just before we went on that break, I've been discussing with Mr. Alexa Wilcox. He's an accountant and also a public affairs analyst. Now, the security issue is, is topmost on everyone's mind because we saw what happened last, uh, in the last election, uh, which you did say is heat free, but some of us saw <laughs> what happened. Uh, the ballot snatching, the attacks on people. In one case, there was this woman whose face was stabbed and she had to go um, cover up and still continue to, to, to vote. Now, um, what would you say to the police as we prepare for the Saturday election? tomorrow. Okay. Um, violence has always been part of our electionary uh, processes, uh, which is quite regrettable and unfortunate. And we thought that by this time, um, um, we should have gone beyond that. But again, emotions are always running high. People have expectations and they have interests that they want to protect. And so um, people t tend to uh, carry out acts which they are not even asked to do. You know, I also saw, you know, you know, you saw, now you talked about the woman that was stabbed in the eye. I also saw a man that was manhandled in one place in the nature because he was, voted, he was voting for a particular party. He was so manhandled that they uh, chased out of the place. You know, I also saw that uh, somebody was killed just after the election. You know, so um, the police, uh, despite the assurances, they can't be everywhere. What's the number of police we have in Nigeria? 300, uh, about 400,000. And if you, if you deploy 400,000 policemen, or oh, to F, how many police units do we have? 176,000 police units. How many police will man all the police units? I remember where I voted, near my house where I voted. One policeman was to about three police units. One policeman One to policeman three polling units. About three police units. That's just, in Shomoli. You said he voted yes, around yes, Shomoli. Yes, I'm in Shomoli, yes. There are about three polling units within a circumference area, just one. And you, and, and you can't force that. Because like I said, we have 170,000, we have 400,000 policemen. They will honor, and those, a lot of them will be on other duties, office duties, those who are guiding the court, those who are guiding prison, those, you know? So what will be available may just be 100,000 or thereabouts for election duties. But this is quite unfortunate, you know, so, isn't it? Because we had been preparing for this election. Yeah. I remember I interviewed the public uh, relations officer of the police, Lagos Command, uh, CSP, uh, SP Benjamin Hundey, yeah. and I did raise these questions, these concerns, and I was assured that uh, they were going to uh, get more hands, they were going to synergize with all necessary agencies that they can synergize with. Matter of fact, I had called them this morning hoping that I can get him on so that we can also discuss this. It, but it, I couldn't it, connect with you see, You see, you can't put the boots on the ground in every area. It should be strategic. They will know the flash areas, okay, where they will cause the resource. Today in Nigeria, if you're talking, today in Lagos, we're talking about election violence. Where does it take place? You talk about Osho de Solo. You talk about uh, Amu Wadofi. These are flashpoints mm -hmm. where election violence and maybe part of a fellow do, a, a Jeremy fellow do. These are flashpoints of much electoral conflict. You can also talk about part of Sule. Mm -hmm. Okay? If you come to Yaba, Shomolu area, we are peaceful people. Okay? We love ourselves. So we don't, <laughs> we don't come at each other's truth. So that's why you can keep one policeman to man about three, four police units. And we all behave ourselves. But when you go to those flashpoints, of mm. course, they have to, they know, they, have, they must have mapped out their own strategy. Mm. So it's not as if it's not that. But of course, the police cannot be there in all the uh, locations all the time. Before you call police, before there will be a ballot bus snatching in, in one unit and the police start coming, what's happening to that unit? So, but you see, it beholds on politicians across board. Mm -hmm. Okay? And it beholds on we, the citizens, across board. Despite who you support, 
there will be one winner. Unfortunately, um, the, the third force in Lagos uh, in, in the national election brought in a lot of pressure to Lagos. And that might continue towards the go go uh, gubernatorial election. There has been thought for people are talking about thought for. I say there has been thought for in Nigerian politics. It's not. It's not. It, it was only a two, a, a two horse race in 2015 and 2019. In 2020, in 2007, 2011, 2015, 2011, there were thought forces. The CPC was a was a was a formidable force. I mean, so there has always been a thought force. Yeah, but uh, the wind of the CPC probably didn't blow as much no, as it blew in the, the north. LP, it didn't blow in the south. LP, no, oh, it didn't blow in the south. It blew in the north. Yeah, the LP wind is, is kind of blew across the country it blew, from it, what we saw. The LP wind, which is why it's so the uh, loud. Wind, this the LP wind blew in three major geopolitical areas. That's where the LP wind blew in three major geopolitical areas: in the south, south, in the southeast, the north, central. It blew in Lagos in the southwest. Let's look at the but flashpoints. The Let's look at other flashpoints in Lagos. Where would you say as some of the other flashpoints where the police should actually maybe presently, pay attention? Uh, maybe presently Etiosa. Mm -hmm. Maybe presently Etiosa. Mm -hmm. Because of what happened last, uh, the, in the last election. But the major flashpoint that has always been uh, a major area of contention remains Osho de Solo. Mm -hmm. Part of Sue Lere. Uh, Amu Wadofi. Akota. Okota is Oshede Solo local. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, talking about Oshede, I'm talking about local government. Now. Yeah, okay, okay. So, uh, Okota is under Oshede Solo. Yeah, okay. So, that is where, these are the flashpoints. Mm -hmm. Then, if you look at Okay? So, if you take, if you look at take, um, uh, the, the entire, I'm talking about the entire local government now. Yeah. If you look at Jeremy, you take the entire uh, uh, Amu Wadofi, you take the entire Oshede Solo, you take the upper part of Suleri, that is the area that Suleri took constituency. Mm -hmm. Then, you talk about um, you talk about uh, Etiosa. These are major flashpoints that constitute most of the where you find some of the violence mm -hmm. that takes place. And of course, it's understandable because of the forces in contention in those areas. Yeah. If you go to a place like Ikorodu, Ekbe, Badagri, my 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 beloved Shumolu, <laughs> we are peaceful people. And even as you Mushi, said, you love yourselves. E even Mushi that used to be a a hotbed mm. in terms of election. It's, it's, it, 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 I mean, they are, they are matured, you know? They are matured, and you see them conduct themselves in such a manner that they, it's kind of longer here, breach of peace in, Shum, in, in, in Mushi. Before we know? move to the other parts of the country to take a, take a look at the uh, political gladiators in some places like yeah. River State, Kaduna, mm -hmm. Delta, and the others, there is also the issue of the Aura Festival, which has created lots of uh, <laughs> discuss <laughs> in, in Lagos. Uh, Oro Festival. Uh, what's your take on all I, that's playing <laughs> out over that? I, I just begin to see every part of Lagos wanting to do Oro. oro, oro. I, I, I don't understand. Hmm. I, I don't understand. Well, I, I'm a Lagos chef by association. I've lived in Lagos all my life and uh, pay my tax and everything in Lagos. So I'm a Lagos yes. uh, But I'm not an indigenous thing. <laughs> indigenous you know, that's Lagosian. another thing so, we'll talk about. Let's finish so, with Oro so, Festival. So, so I do not know the concept of... I know that once in a while there's Oro Festival. Okay. Oro Festival. It, it's not only in Lagos, it happens in most of the southwest. Uh, so it's a yellow, a Yoruba thing. Yes, it's a, it's a, oh, yeah, oh, it's a, I think it's a Yoruba thing. Mm. I lived in Ibadan, I lived in Lagos. So it's a when, do, when do they usually do it in Lagos? Before well, 2023? I have, no, I have been hearing of it. It happens mainly in Badagri area, no, in Ikorodu area. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to hear it in. Um, Part of Etiosa, anyway. Maybe those other parts, of, like the Legushi side of Etiosa. So it's an annual thing. Yes, it is. I think it's an annual thing because it happens once. Now. But uh, this one, it comes to me like uh, everywhere now. So I do not know the the tradition of Lagos. I do not know. I'm not. I do not know. Okay. The, okay. I'm not part of the 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 kingship and the. Uh, the traditional institutions in Lagos. Okay, so, so you wouldn't be in a position so to tell us to whether tell it's us. usually done in February or March. No, I don't. Or I don't know, but I know that it's not just an annual. I think it's an occasional thing. It happens. I think in the Kurudu, it happens more frequently. Okay, it happens more in the, in the Kurudu most of the time. So I, it's, but I'm shocked that it's happening everywhere. Even in Igbo Bisabe, near my house, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I had Igbo Bisabe. When I was in there, I saw Igbo Bisabe. That's where I pass every day when I'm coming to work or when I'm going out. So mm. I don't know how. But um, please, like, Lagosians and everyone, uh, please just, um, there are traditional institutions, respect them and uh, be safe.
That's all I can tell anybody. Let's not start challenging mm. the status quo. The owners of the land have a right to carry out their activities. Mm -hmm. So please give let, to Caesar let, what is Caesar's let's respect and give to them God what and is let's God. be safe. Mm -hmm. If their oru is between 12 midnight and 5.30 a.m., please let everybody be safe. Uh, uh, go in line and, um, and, and, and let us keep the peace. Yeah, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. And I hear that the king has also assured the people that there will not uh, be any kind of consequences to them when they come out to vote on Saturday. No, no, they, because no, the no, process ends before but, the election but, time. Yeah. Well, the election is 8 to 2. Yes. Uh, so Oro is 12 midnight to 5.30 to, to a.m. So uh, yeah, nobody's coming out to vote at 5.30, except you have other things you want to do. <laughs> except you want to do other things. Okay, another <laughs> thing that's been thrown up of late is the issue of indigenous ship. Um, why? Look, um, I, am, I am one of the most destabilized Nigerians. I believe, I love every tribe in this country. I have friends caught across every part of this country. I love Nigeria to my marrows. This is the only thing I have going for me. Yeah, let I could see that from the fire with which you defended the country, and I find me, that very, very good. Let me say this. Mm. I have not benefited anything directly from any government in this country. Maybe the only thing I benefited from government of this country is because of my university education, which was well, free. Let, let, let's put it that way. But I have never benefited. I, I've never worked for government. I've never had contracts with any government. I don't even know any government house in this country. I've never been, been to any. I've been a vocal political activist, a vocal commentator on TV, on radio. I've criticized, I've supported, I've put my life on line. I've lost friends, I've lost family members because they hated me for my views and my positions with respect to government and their policies and everything. I must defend this country. So I love Nigeria. But you see, um, anywhere you are, you must know who you are, you must know your roots. Mm -hmm. So you do, I can't come to Lagos and start rubbing shoulder with the owners of Lagos. I've lived in Lagos. All my taxes are paid in Lagos. I've not paid any tax in River State. I'm from River State. I've not paid any tax in River State. Maybe when I, okay, maybe before I, before I go to university, when I did some work. I've not paid tax in River State. I paid my tax in Lagos. But I will not come and impose my will in Lagos. Even if I'm qualified to contest, to contest the election in Lagos, as having lived in Lagos for the past how many years. But at the same time, I will not... Come. But is anyone imposing his will in will, Lagos at this look, point in time? if you see what is happening... Because I don't understand... Except, 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 we, want to, except we want to live in denial. I like want to live in denial. If we see the narratives that are going on, the narratives that are going on does not speak well of anybody who is a sojourner to Lagos. The narratives that are going on... I, I, have, I, have, I have had... Challenges. I have challenged a lot of people who had arguments left us and center. The, the mere concept that anybody will wake up and say Lagos is the no man's land is so insulting to Lagosians. Even the aborigines of Lagos, even not to talk of the people of Ekbe, the people of Badagri, the people of Ikorodu, the people of Ketu. I'm talking about typical, traditional area where, are, where people are. The people of Isaleko, yes, there are some infiltrations of the Brazilians and people that, let me, let me leave history. But you cannot tell me that Badagri was a no man's land, or that Ekwe was a no man's land, or Ekwe was a no man's land. So if you are telling me that Suri is a no man's land, okay, well, it's a new, it's a new area. If you tell me that, if you tell me that uh, Amu Wadaf is a no man's land, but if there were, if, if, if there was a no man's land, how did people get to that place? So, for me, we must all respect ourselves and conduct ourselves in the light of where we, who we are. Now, even if who come to say Lagos to no man's land, he comes from a place to Lagos now. Why does the person go back there for Christmas or for, or when, or something, when, when, when they die in Lagos, you are taken back to that place, if Lagos is a no man's land? Why not buried in Lagos, in your house in Lagos as a no man's land? So, I am not against the fact that... You know, that this narrative is very unfortunate, isn't it? I've lived in Lagos no, for no, years. Let's see, let's never been intimidated by any original Lagosian. Nobody. I have Lagosian friends. Nobody. Le nobody. nobody. But because, but if, because if for whatever reason, political reasons, and this thing showed up their ugly heads always during political era. Thank you. You just hit it. Let me say this. Let me just make this briefly. If for any political reasons, now, politicians want to explore that aspect... 
that aspect, and then you, you give it yourself to be exploited in that aspect, then you are hitting your head against the original owners of Lagos. And when they react, if they react, it will become Would it be right to dangerous. say it is actually the politicians that are bringing up this narrative, knowing it's going to stir up emotions and cause problems? Because I don't even see any non-indigent coming out to beat his chest and say, I'm going to, this is a no man's land, therefore I'm going to grab this and grab that and grab no, that. No, Lagos have been very, very accommodated to everybody. Let me, let me say this. Lagos have no Lagosians in the House Assembly. It can't happen in River State, my, river, my state. It can't happen in Imo State, Panambra State. I'm from River State. You can't say that for sure. It can't happen. Just like I said, um, it's politicians that are raising these things. Um, I know that... Um, well, this indigenous ship and the settlership issue, I mean, it's mainly between the, my South Eastern brothers and the, and the Yorubas. And of course, the South Easterners have a large presence in Lagos. Lagos is a melting point for everybody. Mm -hmm. And we all come here, we all make up, because um, all the businesses are here. The, 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 the prosperity, I mean, the, 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 the big prosperity is here. Mm -hmm. You know, even though you can still make it in anywhere you are. And Lagos is said to be a mega city. It's a mega, I And mean, that's pretty, uh, this, that, is, is, it can is, only come about by the population. Yes, it's the, economy, is, it's the economic capital. Yeah. I mean, I know the first time I came to Lagos, the very first time I came to Lagos, it was 1982. Uh, that first stack area, we are all empty lands. Mm. I know, I lived in a um, satellite town then. We are all empty lands. But today, that's a different ball game. It, 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 it's a different story. So when people come, we're here. Yes, it, it can make anywhere your home, you know. But again, it's so, 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 so when uh, I remember uh, that the that the when the PDP was still in contention, uh, the PDP always want to get that part, that population because naturally, I think the Igbos naturally are, uh, are um, conservative in nature. Mm. So even in the south, it's equal that the PDP makes wave. So that again affects wherever they are, you know. So. It's, 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 in fact, it's not a bad thing to be to have a political um, ideology and to believe in it. So it, for me, it's not bad. So, well, well, anytime it is election, I remember when um, this man was contesting, he was mainly talking about that population. The, the population will make him governor. The population will make him. Go that was this man. What's his name now? The last PDP um, governorship candidate. He, I think he contested two times. So they have stared that on that that uh, they have stared that. Is it uh, Jimmy Agbaji? Jimmy Agbaji, yes. He was, he was very open about it, that the Igbo population will make him governor. He, has, he promised so much to that, to, I mean, to that segment. And so they have stared of that honest, or that, that, or that. So the people are even aware that they have a strength. Mm -hmm. And so they can use their strength. But you see, you don't commit, you don't commit suicide by putting all your eggs in one basket. You will revolt you, you, it, if it boomerangs it will revolt against you negative. And that's what we happened happen, happen today. When the Obi factor came in, yes, um, a lot of... Obi had... It's not just the Obi factor. Obi had appeal in so many factors. There are so many factors that helped Obi to win Lagos. And one of them is the Christian community factor. The Christian community adopted Obi as, their, as a Christian candidate. And that is also why he made waves in the, in, the, in, the, in the north central part of the country. You know, the Christian factor. So that was a very strong factor. And again, the youth, which was also for me. So it's not just the Igbo factor. Yes, Definitely. the Igbo factor was strong. I'm glad you're mm. making this clarity and clarification yes. because uh, some people are beginning to misconstrue or uh, uh, analyze it wrongly to make it seem as if the LP thing is about religion and tribe. It goes beyond that. Well, 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 I am, well, I am, I am of the opinion that um, the LP is beyond yes it has a very big tribal factor the uh, uh, in the sense that the younger Igbos connected more to it and that used that to the, the 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 mainstream Igbo establishment was pdp was pdp and they were all shouted because they knew that that factor was going to cost them a lot of votes and it did cost and them. it did cost them a lot of votes article losing that election was basically it would be hotter than Atiku. Far more than it is even out of Tunibu. Because they, the, his main block, being the Igbos, uh, being the southeast and part of South South, was, 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 was designed by Obi. And so, so, with that, and don't forget, the Igbos are very good in propaganda and social media. So they use it very well. 
And so that connected with the youth, especially those that the, the NSAS group. Those that participate in the mm -hmm, NSAS mm -hmm. group. So that connected very much with them. Not because they are, they are, they are the Ibo candidates. But when a concerted group throws up a thing and, and, and then fly it very well in the middle, it gained ground. Mm -hmm. And then the Christian factor, which for me, if it was a, I'm a Christian. I think it was the most suicidal thing the Christians have done in this country. Because now you have exposed yourself to ridicule and to other kinds Let me not go there. No, no, let's go there. No, Why no, let me not say go there because that? Because let, you know that there was this thing about the Muslim Muslim ticket of yes, the APC yes. and then the Christian Muslim ticket of yes, the Labour Party the, of, and then you have the Christian Muslim ticket no, the of the PDP. The, the Muslim Christian ticket of the PDP. Yeah, well, okay. whichever okay, way. Okay, yeah. uh, be so only because the, the, the Muslim Muslim ticket of the P APC, APC was started to have been... Uh, a major thing that would have stood against them, and he did stand against them, which was why well, you have the well, well, Christian well, community well, well, rising up no, the way no, they no, did. Well, you see, well, you see, number one, um, every political party must have their calculations as to the best formula that can give can win an election. Mm -hmm. Is that the ideology? Because I mean, a Biden could not have taken a, a Biden Biden could not have taken a, 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 a Kamala a Kamala Rice mm -hmm. as, a, as a as a vice. Mm -hmm. Because they share different ideologies. But the establishment called them and said, Guy, if you want to help you win this election, it must be Kamala. Mm -hmm. You understand? The, the, the establishment has to intervene. Biden was not, Kamala was not Biden's first choice. But when you know the formula can help you win election, mm -hmm. you go for that formula. Political calculations. Political calculations. Look, we're not going there to discuss, to discuss uh, the church or discuss the mosque. And that is the unfortunate thing that we have brought, it, we have made tribe to run in our political system, in our life. We're not using religion. For goodness sake, all my friends are Muslims. My landlord is a Muslim. We have wonderful, fantastic relationship. My best friend that has helped me, even when my Christian brothers could not help me, and has helped me in various, I'm not saying I'm, I don't have support in my Christian base. But I tell you, somebody that when I was in their strain, in their depression, the only person that came to my rescue was, was, a, was a Muslim brother, was a Muslim. So I don't have any, any, don't bring religion to me. Don't, so when Christians, when the, the, the churches, look, I've, I quarter, I, I've not gone to my church for since, before, about four weeks before the election and since after the election. Because I had serious quarrel. Serious quarrel. Call me anything you want to call me. I will tell you the truth. As far as I'm concerned. That was a suicide. Because you think that the Christian votes can give you this. In APC, they are Christians now. Of course. In PDP, they are Christians. Mm -hmm. OB, OB happens to be a Christian because they're Christian. Let me not go there because, I mean, the election is over. Yeah, the election so, is so, over. So, so, so that factor played well in Lagos. Because you have the big churches, you have the redeemed, the Kenan land, the, you have the big churches, the churches were out. And Lagos was a melting pot. But it is, isn't it so sad that even in the 21st century, uh, how many years since our independence, Nigeria is still polarized along all these divides? Very sad for me. That is, the sad, that, is the, that is the sad part of my everyday activity. That we still see ourselves in this guy. Look, I have visited 36, 34 states in this country. I've, only, I've not visited two. I've visited 34 states in this country. Mm -hmm. So people who have not traveled are those that will sit in their corners of their room with their borrowed data <laughs> and be sending rubbish and be talking rubbish. People who have traveled to other parts of this country, you appreciate Nigeria. Definitely. I wish I can live in I wish I can live I wish I can live in Jos or I can live in Kaduna. I wish I can live in Jos or in Kaduna. I look, when people have not gone out. They will sit in the corners of their, of their, of their, of their, maybe somebody's room or something, and they will borrow that. And be throwing up all sorts of um, all kinds of things. negative and energy. Negative, but let's talk negative about vibes. I have, the, the I have the best of friends among the Igbos. I can mention their names. I have the best of friends among the Igbos. How do you see the governorship election playing out in River State? Ah, that's my state. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm involved. <laughs> well, um, River State will give you an interesting state, sincerely. Um, uh, but I, but, I, but I still see the PDP running home. 
Uh, the Labour Party is no longer existing in River State, as far as governorship elections concerned. You can't say that for sure. Well, their candidate has withdrawn and all much collapsed. You know, there was a problem with their candidate. Mm -hmm. it, has, it either has collapsed, it has structure, or it has withdrawn. I think the race now is a three-horse three race between the PDP, the APC, and the SDP. Okay. Uh, so um, it's going to be an interesting race, really. Um, but I still, well, if, like we all say, if the, elect if the process is smooth, Clear. Uh, I still see the PDP having an edge. What about Kaduna State? Kaduna, Kaduna State has an interesting situation where the incumbent vice uh, deputy governor is, is, running, is, is still running. running. No, you know, it's running as a deputy. It's running as a deputy, deputy for, for, the, for, for, the, the APC. for the APC. It's going to be also an interesting race because um, the APC lost Kaduna. Mm -hmm. In fact, APC did woefully in Kaduna in the present election. Mm. They did woefully. Uh, but at this point, Atiku is not on the ballot. Well, most of them voted Atiku, um, being um, in Notana. Uh, Obi is not on the ballot. <laughs> most of those that voted in the like Santa Carolina voted because of Obi. So Obi is not in the ballot. Atiku is not in the ballot. Mm -hmm. Now it is all of us. It's all of us. So we now need to slog it out. <laughs> so it's going to be an interest. You see, because some of the factors that are played in the presidential election were not played in the governorship election. Definitely. The governorship election is a, a more of a domestic election. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's going to be, okay, now we are back home. Atiku is not going in the ballot. Okay, voted Atiku because it's a, it's a Notana. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, the Notana agenda. Because Atiku played Notana agenda very well. Yeah. For, for part of the main Matter of fact, he did mm. make some very suicidal statement at some point. Exactly. In the Exa of the exactly. Campaign. Exactly. No, no, but, no but, but, but it played out for him in the North, really. It, look, Atiku would have won this election if Obi was not there. Okay. You if Obi so? was not there, Atiku would have won this election. It would have been a good run for the APC if Obi was not there. And that's why, that's why, forgive me, that's why I said Tinubu's, Tinubu's victory is God's divine. And so when Christians are saying this, and I say, look, God can create anything. God is not man. Okay, let's go to Oyo State. How do you see it playing out there? Uh, Oyo, Makinde. Mm. There's clean for Larry. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, so many things were going on. At some point, we thought that the LP had adopted him uh, because some people said, okay, for him to have joined with the, the G5, mm. uh, he had shot himself in the foot. Yes. And then LP. No, no, no. no. All the G5 shot himself in the foot, mm. really. All the G5 shot. Uh, apart from Wicked, I mean, that he's still standing. Um, the, all the G5 shot themselves in the foot. Um, I don't know how standing Wiki is because he's been trying to assuage the nerves no, no, of the no, people no, 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 over no. what played out no, 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 on February uh, uh, 25th. He's standing because he, he won his House of his Senate seats in all the senators. Mm -hmm. He won most of the House of Rep seats. I'm so talking about the governorship I'm seat. So he still has, so that was his standing. Mm. He, he went to compare with an autumn that lost both the states mm. to APC, lost all the senatorial seats, lost all the House of Rep seats. He knew, he said it before the election that he was ready to lose but, but even that, his... That even is a braggado. <laughs> he would not want to win an election. <laughs> also, a Shema Kende mm -hmm. that uh, lost all the senatorial seats to, uh, to, to APC, mm -hmm. lost most of the House of Rep seats. I think the PDP didn't, uh, has maybe one of very few House of Rep seats. I think, uh, I, I also live in Ibadan. So I think Ibadan, Southwest and Northwest mm -hmm. was PDP and some of that place. So, a she is 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 in for a very big run. Hmm. I, I I might give it to the APC. All right. Well, that's uh, that's your thing. Because that's because there are factors working against she. Remember some of the people that supported she hmm. um, to in 2019 are against him. The larger factor, although they have a candidate, they're talking about the, about the uh, court party. They have a candidate, but. Um, Oh, they that of the Accord Party, they have crisis there. I had one of them, the chairman, Lagos State chapter, and we discussed that they have serious issues in Oyo State. But I've been told that our time is up. Okay. But before we go, your last word to Nigerians watching. So much apathy, fear, and so many things just going on out there. What do you say to an electorate watching you? Uh, should he go and vote? Should this, he stay at home and protect himself? Still, I know that there is a God in Nigeria. Go out there and vote. There is no, I don't, see, I don't see any crisis anywhere. Just go out there. Go and perform your, your responsibility. And that book will love your country. Do good to her. Mm -hmm. Pray for her. Make sure that you defend her. Defend your country. Make sure that you have this nationalistic pride in you. Yeah. You have no other, even if you jack back, mm. you are still a Nigerian. You can't be you a Briton. You still carry that you grain. You carry Nigerian genes. So love your country and protect her. May God bless Nigeria and may God 
defend and protect our troops. May God continue to bless Nigeria. Lester Wilcox, an accountant, public affairs analyst, has been my guest on today's episode of The Run-Up. You've heard him. Go out and vote. Love Nigeria. Pray for Nigeria. Drop all these tribalistic things going on, the violence, the thuggery, everything. None of them benefits anyone. Trust me. I am Maureen Menongwe Zigwe. Many thanks for watching. Good afternoon.